Okay, so let's talk about ghost Pokemon, psychics, and dark types, and them being like, probably out of all the Pokemon types, they have the ability to see things that other people cannot. They are they're proof that there is more out there, even if the eyes can't be met with them. So anyways, uh, so a ghost type is basically a spirit, you know, with unknown energy. A psychic type is basically somebody who can use like supernatural powers to see things. And, and you know, and while we're at it, we'll throw fairy, fairy types in there too, because it seems like that's the closest thing we have to light types too. So you have dark types are basically chaotic, evil, and, and basically, um, you have, uh, what is it, um, fairy types, which are good, and they try to do the best they can, like light, yin and yang, basically. So, basically, I find it very interesting, actually, um, how a lot of these Pokemon are, their type advantages are, a lot of their, um, you know, the way, the way they're um, brought in by some of this stuff. Um, so like, not only that, but like a ghost Pokemon could be a Pokemon that, you know, it, it, it's, it's an unknown form of energy that's able to do some of the weirdest things. Like, I'll give you an example. Ghastly. Ghastly was one of the very first Pokemon that we know of. It was a ghost, eventually a ghost type. But, uh, what ended up happening was the ghost Pokemon was able, like, like it says, it's able to consume something just by simply hovering over it. Like it's able to consume it over time. It draws it out into like a nauseous state and then it just eventually transports it to some other realm or it consumes it somehow. Very freaky and unusual, but you know, if a ghastly can do that, it kind of makes you wonder the same thing with like Haunter and Gengar. Well, they don't sound as sinister. What are they really trying to do? I mean... We had like a Pokemon Mystery Dungeons one, for example, you know, Gengar was there from the beginning and, you know, he was not just there trying to mock people and all that. He was also there to, you know, drag people into hell, sort of, kind of like how Dusknor does the same thing and that's a different Pokemon. But, um, you know, but at the same time we have like fairy types which are supposed to punish like the bad Pokemon and all that and they're also supposed to be like supernatural Pokemon that are come from like another dimension, like, you know, fairy types. Good Pokemon that's a fairy type be like a Clefable or a or a, I was gonna say Blissey. I can't remember if Blissey is actually a fairy type though. Probably is. A fairy type. It's a normal and a fairy type, right? Well, anyways, so fairy types are immune to dragon types. So they can take out dragon types very, very easily, you know. So much for Lance taking his, uh, you know, Pokemon, you know, they're in, nearly indestructible, right? There's uh, more than one way to take them out now. <laughs> so every Pokemon type has a, has a weakness somehow. Um, it's uh, also worth noting you have some Pokemon that are ghosts and... It's like a ghost and a psychic? Or a dark and a ghost type? Like Sableye, for example. Sableye is really interesting. It's real freaky. You only find it in like the depths of a dark cave and it's literally its eyes are like just gems. Yeah, pretty pretty interesting how that Pokemon, like it's like a, it's a cave dweller obviously, but it's not like a, it's a cave dweller in the sense that it's like a ghost. You know, what kind of Pokemon is it? You know, where did it come from? What is it based on? Obviously it's based on some mythology, but, but it'd be really interesting to run into those in real life. You know, could it go through walls? Could it disappear and reappear whenever it wanted to? Very interesting stuff, how it would take, have the tactical advantage being able to see in the dark, let alone trying to stalk something if it's after something. Um, you know. Uh, what else was there? So, and you also had Pokemon like, uh, oh jeez, what was it? Like Yazadel or something like that, the legendary bird. Though, that, that, that had the ability to like suck the life out of things. And then of course you had Xerneas that uh, would be able to restore it with its, you know, life abilities and all that. It's actually pretty interesting how uh, uh, some Pokemon have the ability to like, it's it's just like anti-matter. And then and you, of course you have like Giratina who's a ghost and a dragon. Literally has the ability, to, it's just anti-matter versus like, you know, matter. Most of the stuff in this universe is made of original matter. And even those can be broken down into like other things too. So it does make you wonder, you know, how far those Pokemon can go and what they originally had their concept as. Arcsiris can obviously be whatever the hell it wants because it's the legend, you know, it's basically the god of this universe. And I mean, and, and, and beyond, you know, whatever that Pokemon, where that Pokemon came from, because obviously that Pokemon had to have come from somewhere. Again, more proof that it's infinite somehow. So I would say that the dark types, the fairy types, the the 
the ghost types and the psychic types all can see things other people cannot. And they're proof, because again, you know, even just a psychic type has the ability to see things. Like Gardevoir, for example, has the ability to create black holes with the psychic powers to protect its trainer, or even uh, create like a, it's like fixated on, uh, you know, loves of some kind. It's a psychic and a fairy type, obviously. You know, has powers that it can see in the future. And then, of course, you have like a Pokemon like Alakazam, which has like, a, like an IQ of like 5,000. It might actually be even higher than that, considering that if it knows everything, well, it knows a lot more than it leads itself on to believe. Obviously, Alakazam is a lot smarter than you think it is. That's actually pretty interesting. So... There's other Pokemon that could go around, but you know, basically the way it goes is that we have a balance in the Pokemon universe. The Pokemon universe is infinite and there's obviously a lot more than what meets the X. Nobody knows everything, but in most people on the planet that Pokemon takes place on, those people didn't all, all explore just the planet they inhabit. So what other planets are there and how many other Pokemon? See, this is where it gets interesting because this opens up the door to infinite possibilities with Pokemon. Like, you know, for example, and even ROM hacks can come into it and it could explain this. You know, like, like certain legendary Pokemon are capable of time traveling. Two Pokemon that come to mind, you know, Celebi and um, Dialga, right offhand. There could be other Pokemon too, but those two Pokemon are basically what we understand them as. Well, Arcsiris too, but... You know, just to give an example. So, you know, there could be Pokemon out there where they could time travel, take you back to a different time period, and we would be able to understand, like, what happened at a different location. You know, like, a good example, like, you know, if you had the time traveling Celebi, you know, event done, you basically could go fight Giovanni in the past, you know. So, it basically uh, took us to a more simpler time, rather. See, what I think is really interesting is they uh, kind of confirm that, yeah, you know, Pokemon can time travel, but they can also, they know more than what they lead people on. And hence, they're like the guardians of the galaxy, rather, you know, or maybe they have their own mission in life. They're immortals that basically watch over the mortal world. They're given the ability to do what they want, so as long as they don't break their golden rules, which are, you know, to give out their powers and whatnot. Otherwise, certain Pokemon might appear and stop them themselves, just waiting in an ambush, rather, you know? So, it's interesting to think about, you know? Kind of like Arcsiris. They, they say the concept, they, like the same thing with like angels and demons, like as far as Pokemon goes. You know, we know that there are mythical Pokemon that are hiding in the, in the background somewhere, the shadows, the universe, beyond that. But the second something gets out of hand... Do they immediately strike, though? I wouldn't be surprised, you know? So, like, you have Arcsiris that might be somewhere else, meanwhile, creating new stuff. Or maybe it's creating itself on its own. Like, you know, different... Like, it's already let it, and it's just watching over it now, somehow, waiting for it to form. Meanwhile, it's got its... It's different Pokemon, like, traveling through, like, different parts of different dimensions, trying to figure out, like, where, where they're going, what are they going to do next... And hence, nothing's perfect. So perfection will never be achieved yet, but we can definitely try to. So basically, it's it's like a concept of how they're trying to shape the the universe or or uh, existence as it is, all the possibilities into their own image. But at the same time, though, they're trying to keep the balance so that way nobody overthrows them. But not like a, an evil dictator, but like. But just to make sure that they are fighting for, like, they're not giving up on their dreams as uh, as trying to help the world out, you know, as much as people don't realize their own creations of something higher up, you know. And as far as Pokemon goes, we've learned that, you know, Arcsiris, you know, like, it's like, you know, like a good example could be like in Gen 4, for example, you know, contrary to belief, you had the idea that Giratina was a prankster and was banished to the distorted realm where it slowly watches over like what's going on everywhere else. But Giratina is obviously cunning and it knows how to escape and it has the ability to time travel through time and space, kind of like Dialga and Palkia. But it actually might have the concept of time better than Dialga. In, in some cases, better than Dialga. But it still doesn't stand a chance because it's we. I mean, I think Dialga and Polkia easily could take out Giratina very easily. But, um, but what's really interesting, though, is, um, 
you know, Garatina is still very strong. It has a lot of different powers that it leads on. So, like, you might remember how Cyrus found a way to control one of Dialga or Palkia or both based on, you know, his inventions. However, you know, he caught the, the legendary trio, so they couldn't interrupt what he was going to do. But eventually, Garatina came out of the blue and sucked him into it and released the other two Pokemon. Like, I kind of, like, as a favor that, yes, Garatina can have a change of heart every once in a while. And I did, in fact, want to help out, you know, its original brothers of some kind, you know. So they weren't just fighting each other. So even though... Giratina is just a Pokemon that's like mostly misunderstood rather and it's not maybe not necessarily 100% evil but it is capable of changing you know just like you know like Arcsiris maybe Arcsiris doesn't intervene with certain things because it's got better things to do and it knows better a lot of other people handle their problems you know because at some point they will especially if he has like hands-on knowledge about this ahead of time that's probably for the best you know because what's the easiest way to solve a problem without making it worse right that's always the golden rule. So as a god, they kind of understand that concept. So, you know, for them to say, like, you know, why do they do this? Why do they do that? Well, maybe they're doing other things. Maybe they're preoccupied already, you know. So that would also explain a lot. That explains, that would explain, like, the, the supernatural take on, like, why psychics, ghosts, dark, and even, uh, you know, hell, even dragon types, if you want to say that, or even fairy types. They all have like their own mythical powers. Maybe some are stronger than, much stronger than others, and there's no limit to what they can learn. But at the same time, though, there's no limit to what they can do either. So doing and knowing are two different things, basically. And like, and like Flip from G.I. Joe always used to say, knowing is half the battle. So with that in mind, we'll leave it to that. We'll see what mysteries will hold us in the future with Pokemon, but. And, and whatever else I can imagine and come up with. <laughs> but, anyways, so subscribe if you're not already. And I will see you in the next video.